Well, that's the way a neophyte devotee is too. We want to be meditating on the Lord within our heart when we're doing our bhajan, when we're doing our deity worship, when we're doing our seva. But if we're going to do something that we know the Lord doesn't want, we don't want to feel his eyes upon us. We want to forget him temporarily. But the Lord never forgets us. That is the dilemma. Whether you like it or not, whether you want it or not, the eyes are watching with the same intensity. <clears throat> it's not that, you know, when you're doing sinful activity, you, he, he watches less. He's watching in the same way, always. And this is what determines our spiritual progress, how faithful we are to the presence of the Paramatma within our heart. Chaitya Guru. He's the Guru within the heart. But because since time immemorial we have been very selective in when we remember him and when we forget him, and because of that phenomena, we can't hear him anymore. Sometimes on rare occasions some intuition comes. But in general, we can't hear him, we can't see him. From Krishna's side, the connection is live and well. But from our side, we're unable. So therefore, the Lord, out of his causeless mercy, manifests as the spiritual master. Who is the guru? The guru is simply the representative of the Paramatma within our heart. What the Paramatma wants to tell us that we cannot hear, he's speaking in a way that we can hear in the form of Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra. <clears throat> the scriptures are the words of Paramatma. We can read them. The sadhus are the living embodiments of the will of the Paramatma. And the spiritual master is specifically instructing us what the Paramatma wants us to know and wants us to do. That is the Lord's mercy. So many arrangements he has made to deliver us from within and without. And all we have to do is just cooperate. Srila Prabhupada told us, if you just follow my instructions, simple instructions, follow these regulative principles, chant at least 16 rounds every day, stay in the association of devotees, be humble and try to do service, you will go back home, back to Godhead in this life. The Lord has made so many arrangements for us. All we have to do is just cooperate. But in Kali Yuga, cooperation is very difficult. Is it not? Just to cooperate, it's so difficult. Brahmanda Brahmite Kona Bhagyavan Jiva after so many, many, many lifetimes of just wandering through the universes, just under the dictation of the mind and senses, finally, by the grace of Paramatma, he speaks to us through spiritual master. And then everything is given to us. All we have to do is cooperate. But due to our past conditionings, the false ego, the tendency to cheat, lust and envy and anger and pride and greed, we still have these things. 
and Krishna and Guru from within and without are trying to teach us how to purify ourselves. Arjuna asks Krishna, what is that power that makes a, even a good person act in abominable ways as a force to do so? Kama esha krode esha rajoguna shamudbhava. It is this lust, kama, this passion to be the enjoyer. Yatato hyapikonte ya purushasya vipaschita indriyani pramatani haranti prashabhammana. The senses are so strong and impetuous that they can carry away the intelligence even of a man of discrimination who is trying to control them. We have created the monster of our desires to enjoy through surrendering to Maya since time immemorial. So now it is a very powerful force within us a force more powerful than, our own, than ourselves. Daivi he shukunamai mamamaya duratyaya. This material nature, especially rajaguna and tamaguna, very powerful. But one who surrenders to me can easily cross beyond it. This is our only hope, to take shelter. And that is essentially why the Paramatma is sitting at our side forever, to give us shelter, to make that shelter available to every living being. Vyabhashayatma ka budhir eke ha kuru nandana buhusha ka hyanantas cha budha yo vyabhashayana. But in order to achieve that shelter, one must have determination. <clears throat> it doesn't come automatically. We can wait birth after birth after birth, thinking, Krishna, give me shelter. We could cry out for shelter. But along with our cry for shelter must be the simultaneous determination. In the human life, the free will of the soul is awakened to such a degree that we could say no to the mind and senses. Animals cannot do this, but we have that power. That is human life. If we do not exercise it, then the scriptures call us two-legged animals. But even if we want to exercise it, even with immense determination, who are we in the face of material energy? Maya. <clears throat> Maya is Krishna's potency. Maya is all-powerful. Our determination is not enough. Krishna says we must take shelter of him. We must humble ourselves and understand our helpless condition and surrender to the Lord. But an integral part of taking shelter of the Lord is exercising the power of our determination. As it is said, <clears throat> Benjamin Franklin said it, but we can take wisdom from any, any voice. God helps them who help themselves. He spoke it because he couldn't tolerate seeing lazy people in the name of God. Yes. Prabhupada also could not tolerate lazy people. 
When Prabhupada came to New Vrindavan in 1969, he saw such a nice hills and trees, beautiful surroundings. He came just at the beginning of the summer. It's very nice. And he warned, do not allow anyone to come here to enjoy the atmosphere. Everyone must work hard. No one lazy. Krishna cannot tolerate laziness. Prabhupada did not tolerate laziness. Why? Out of their mercy. Because if we're lazy, we get nowhere. So we cannot be lazy. We must be fully engaged. The idle mind is someone else's workshop. <laughs> so we must be very careful. Idle mind is the devil's workshop. So we must keep busy for Krishna with determination. It is that determination to do the will of the Lord that is an integral part of taking shelter of the Lord. It is taking shelter is not something passive that we just, we just coast along with whatever dictations Maya throws in front of us and we, Krishna save me, Krishna save me. Ah, yes, yes, let me enjoy this. Krishna save me. If we try to, if we think like that, the curtain will close. <laughs> we must be very serious. We must be taking shelter, but taking shelter means, Krishna, I'm yours. And what does that mean? I'm going to do what you want me to do. That is taking shelter. Not that, yes, I should chant 16 rounds. I'm taking shelter of you, Krishna, but I, I just don't have time today to chant 16 rounds. But I'm taking shelter of you, Krishna. Taking shelter means determination to do the will of God with the consciousness that our determination is not the factor. Our determination is simply from our side to show our sincerity. And ultimately, it is Krishna's power that gives us the ability to succeed. So, in this beautiful verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, Aryama is praying to Kurma Avatar. How although he's very mysteriously swimming around in that ocean of milk, he's all-pervading. He's everywhere, seeing everything, controlling everyone. In 1811, I believe, no, what year was it? No. 1911, perhaps. Ah, yes. I don't remember the exact date now. But um, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he was the son of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. He was born in Jagannath Puri. And Thakur Bhakti Vinod then shifted to Calcutta where he was about to start a place which would be famous throughout history of Gaudiya Vaishnavism as his Bhajan Kutir. He was building his home. In <clears throat> the name of that home became uh, what is Bhakti Bhakti Asana, yes. So, when they were digging the foundation for the building, from the ground manifested a deity of Sri Kurmadev, 
<clears throat> Very special. Because we know in Kurma's Lila, he is the foundation. The demigods, the demons, they want, they were churning the ocean of milk to get nectar. Mandara Mountain was the churning rod. Bashuki was the rope. And they were churning to get that nectar. But the mountain was sinking. And the demigods prayed to Vishnu. There was nothing they could do. And Vishnu appeared as this gigantic tortoise. His shell was 800,000 miles across. Hare Krishna. Now you may consider that inconceivable, but so what? <laughs> Who cares what you think? That is not going to determine what Krishna does for his leelas. For Krishna, if you understand his, he's God, for him to assume a form that's 12 inches or 800,000 miles, there's no difference. It's not that one is harder and one is easier for the Lord. Everything is easy for the Lord. He could do anything he wants, anytime. Yes? He can create sun planets and float it in the sky. Can you do that? He can do anything. So for a devotee, when they hear this number, 800,000 miles, now this earth planet is only about 25,000 miles around. So how many times bigger than the earth circumference was Kurma? Very big. 800,000 miles. But for Kurma Avatar, Krishna, he could do anything. He's, he's bigger than the biggest, smaller than the smallest, according to his will. He could become so small that he's the Paramatma within an atomic particle. Yes? Hare Krishna. <laughs> And then he just entered into the ocean and started swimming downward. And then he reached to the, to the bottom of Mount Mandara and he rested there to form a foundational base. <clears throat> now everyone knows foundation is so important. Yes, sometimes when there's earthquakes, if homes don't have good foundations, they just crash. People are crushed to death. But if you have good foundation, then there's very less danger. Yes? So for those of you who are architectural engineering, engineers, you can explain in great detail the importance of any building, a strong foundation to build on and to sustain it. The purpose of the foundation is for sustenance. Yes? Maintenance. You can build a mansion on the sand. No problem. But how long will it last? But if you have a good foundation, it can last thousands of years. And there are mansions, there are buildings thousands of years old that are still standing. Hare Krishna. So in our spiritual lives, we require foundation to give us sustenance so that we can build upon that foundation. <clears throat> and Kurma Avatar, his particular function is to give a strong, sustainable foundation to our spiritual lives. 
Therefore, when Bhaktivinoda Thakur found the deity of Kurma, where he was about to put the foundation of his house, he presented that deity of Kurma Dev to Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, whose then name was Bhimala Prasad. He was about eight years old at the time. And Thakur Bhakti Vinod taught him how to worship Kurma Dev. He gave him the mantras to worship Kurma Dev and taught him the process of archana or deity worship. And simultaneously taught him the process of chanting the holy names of the whole Lord and reading Srimad Bhagavatam. So Srila Prabhupada, he explained that in the path of bhakti, to make spiritual progress from the conditioned state, there are two rails on the track that bring us to Krishna. One is Pancharatriki Vidhi and Bhagavat Mark. <clears throat> The Narada Pancharatra teaches us, especially the principles of Vidhi Bhakti, the rules and regulations required for worshiping the deity. The rules and regulations to live a moral, ethical life. They are important. Devotees are not so proud that they worship the deities according to their whims. Then it becomes a type of idol worship. You, are, you and me, we are not like Gauri Das Pandit, an eternally liberated soul who is descended from Goloka Vrindavan, who picks up a stick before his deity and says, eat everything now. You're not eating enough. If you do that, then there will be a stick that will come upon you in your life. <laughs> and it's not going to be the same stick either. We cannot do that. And Bamsi Das Babaji Maharaj, he had a nice little deity. He would chastise his deity. Yes, chastise. What are you doing? Why are you doing like this? These are eternally liberated souls. If we do that, then our deity worship is corrupted into idol worship. It's simply sentimental. But the process of archana, according to the Pancharatrika system, is the rules and regulations that govern the process of serving the Lord in his deity form. <clears throat> in other words, on his terms, not ours. Service means the terms of the deity. Punctuality, cleanliness, particular mantras for particular things. When Srila Prabhupada first introduced deity worship in, in ISKCON, he, very simple, very, very simple. But still, the rules and regulations were there. He said, if I tell you everything now, what you're supposed to do to worship the deity, you will faint. Hare Krishna. But little by little, he taught us more. But he gave us very simple because Prabhupada was most concerned with the spirit. Whether it's ascending or descending or this way or that way, Prabhupada wanted us to do it with the proper spirit. And he made it very simple. But still, the path was there. So that is Pantaratrika to worship the deities very nicely according to the uh, guidelines of Guru, Shadu, and Shastra. 
and on the other side is Bhagavad Dharma, which means the teachings of Srimad Bhagavatam. <clears throat> Essentially, Srimad Bhagavatam is all about developing our love of God by hearing the glories of the Lord, by praying sincerely to the Lord, and especially by chanting the holy names. <laughs> So following these four regulative principles, properly worshiping the deities, associating with devotees, hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, this is the foundation of our spiritual life. If these things are in order, there is stability and we can grow. If these principles are not in order, Srila Prabhupada explained, if we're not chanting our rounds sincerely every day, at any moment, anyone could fall victim to maya. So we pray to Kurma Dev with this spirit. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur was an eternal associate of the Lord from Goloka Vrindavan. But just to teach us by his example, He worshipped Kurma Dev according to his father's order. As well as he worshipped the deity, he lived by the highest ethical standards, always enthusiastic to hear and chant the glories of the Lord and the Lord's names. He is Acharya, he's teaching by example. So let us play to Kurma Dev to help us to establish this foundation in our spiritual lives. And take shelter of the Lord for this foundation. To not just be sentimental, but to direct our sentiments according to a philosophy that brings substantial results of purification. And in this spirit, to chant Krishna's holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Is there any questions? Yes. Maharaj, thank you very much for this class. You are mentioning about uh, being conscious of the Paramatma. They said that the Jnanis, they attain Brahman and the Yogis attain Paramatma realization. It is also said that devotee, he sees the Lord in the heart, one who has got the ointment of love of God. So is this realization of the devotee who is seeing the Lord in the heart the same as that of the Yogi who is seeing the Paramatma? Yogi nama pisaravesham madgate nantadatmana. It is the realization of a perfect yogi, a bhakti yogi. <clears throat> Sometimes the yogis who do not develop undiluted devotion anyabhilashita sunyam jnana kamam yanavrita. Rupa Goswami says, pure devotional service is untinged with the desire for the results of either jnana or yoga or karma. We don't want elevation to higher material happiness. We don't want mystic powers. We don't want supernatural abilities. 
nor do we want liberation. We simply want to serve the Lord with love. That is pure devotion. That is love. That is pure devotion. So for a devotee, Krishna manifests within our heart. If yogis are not trained properly according to this system, <clears throat> they may actually meditate and have experience of the Paramatma. But oftentimes, they identify themselves with that Paramatma. And then they get a certain type of Paramatma realization, but love of God does not awaken in their heart. So when such yogis come in contact with pure devotees of the Lord, then their meditation becomes perfect. Does that answer your question? Hare Krishna. Yes, Prabhu. Thank you, Guru Dev, for a wonderful class of, on the Paramatma. I have a question regarding uh, how do we know if it's the will of the Paramatma? Sometimes we may think it's the will of the Lord that we do something if there's not the possibility to ask the spiritual master if he is not present. You can ask senior devotees who speak according to the scripture. The will of the Paramatma is not necessarily that you do this or that. It's how you should do it. If you get a specific instruction, then we understand that is the will of Paramatma. But most instructions are not necessarily specific to what particular thing you do, but how you do it. Yes? You may get a specific instruction, move to Mayapur. So then you understand, Paramatma wants me to move to Mayapur. Or you may get a general, you may get the general instructions, be Krishna conscious, serve Prabhupada's mission. Whether you're in Finland or Belgium or England, or Mayapur, or Chopati, doesn't really matter. Wherever you are, just be Krishna conscious. Yes? So then we don't need anything any more specific. We already know what we're supposed to do. Wherever we are, we shouldn't engage in illicit sex, intoxication, gambling, or meat eating. Wherever we are, we should chant 16 rounds every day. Wherever we are, we should be associating with devotees as far as possible. And wherever we are, we should try to be assisting the great movement of Lord Chaitanya. Yes? And wherever we are, we should be more humble than a blade of grass, more tolerant than a tree, ready to offer all respect to others and expect none in return. These are the standing laws. <laughs> Wherever you are, whoever you are, whatever your age, whatever your sect, these are all important, foundational. Kurma Dev rests in these instructions. <laughs> He'll be there to support us whenever we follow these instructions. So these things are very important as far as how to apply them to a particular per situation that may vary. And for that we can ask senior devotees. And the way Prabhupada set up ISKCON for those details it's not that we just go to our guru, we could go to the local authority. Prabhupada had thousands and thousands of disciples. How many approached him with these questions? Only a few. Everyone else just asked their authorities. 
president of Chicago or president of London. Yes? Senior devotees. Sannyasis coming. And they were to give us those details. But Prabhupada gave us all the foundational instructions. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Hare Krishna. You're welcome. Yes, Sri Natsi Prabhu. With your kind permission, Maharaj, yeah. I wanted to add to what uh, was mentioned. Uh, I remember, Maharaj, once I had asked a similar question to Srila Prabhupada because I was still searching. And he said that uh, the yogis other than bhakti yogis are seeing Paramatma in the mirror of their mind and not associating therefore with Paramatma and not offering service to Paramatma because they are seeing only the mirror, the reflection in their mind. Hmm. And the bhakti yogi is associating with Paramatma by devotional service and seeing Paramatma as such and not as a mirror reflection. So, uh, he convinced us to rise above that level. Srila Prabhupada Ki Most perfect answer. Thank you. So we shouldn't be so attached to looking in the mirror. <laughs> we should take more pleasure seeing the beautiful form of Radha Gopinath. Go Premanandi! Thank you very much.